Hi guys, in my previous video I showed you the anterior forearm muscles. So anterior forearm muscles can do uh, flexion of the digits and flexion of the uh, wrist joint. Now I'm going to focus on the posterior compartment of the forearm. They can do opposite the anterior forearm muscles. They can do extension of the wrist and extension of the digit. So we have mainly the extensors and also we have one sup supinator or supinator, extensors and supinator. So my friend is here to show you the forearm bones. Here is the forearm which is extends between the elbow and wrist joint. Laterally you can see the radi radius, medially we have the ulna. Uh, proximal ends of the radius and ulna contribute to forming the elbow joint with the contribution of the distal end of the humerus. And you can see um, here is the distal end of the radius, articulates with the three uh, carpal bones. They make radiocarpal joint or wrist joint. And then you can see the carpal bones. And here we have the uh, metacarpal bones, five metacarpal bones and 14 phalanges. So we have proximal, middle, distal phalanges for four medial digits and proximal and distal phalanges for the thumb. So now you can see here in this lovely model the posterior uh, muscles of the forearm. So we have two layers, superficial layer, they are visible and deep to this we have deep layer. So as you see here, we have uh, plenty of muscles. So I'm going to try to simplify it for you and classify it for you. Uh, superficial layer posterior forearm muscles have two parts, three muscles positioned laterally and three long muscles plus one short muscle positioned posteriorly. So three, three, one, seven muscles superficial layer. So first of all, I'm going to focus on the three lateral part. So you can see this muscle, which is more uh, superficial than the others. It's coming from the arm bone. So it ends up here to the radius, distal end of radius. So the name of the muscle is brachioradialis. The name of the muscle indicates the origin and insertion. Brachio means arm, radialis, radius. So I'm going to show you here on the bone. You can see distal end of the humerus. This is the condyle. Above the condyle, we have supracondylar ridge. Here is the lateral supracondylar ridge. Brachialis attaches here. And then it runs all the way down and attaches to the distal end of the radius. We have this um, styloid process of the radius. So if you look at closely, Brachioradialis tends to be anterior in comparison to other uh, lateral and posterior extensor muscles. As it crosses the elbow joint anteriorly, it can do flexion of the elbow like this. So it helps the uh, elbow flexors. We have the biceps brachii in my previous, I showed you arm muscles, biceps brachii, brachialis, and pronator teres here. So all these three muscles plus a brachioradialis, they cross the elbow joint anteriorly, so they can do flexion of the elbow. And as I mentioned earlier, it attaches to the distal end of the uh, radius. It does not cross the carpal bones or wrist joint. It means that it does not act on the wrist joint. So specifically, if you put your hand in the semi position, so like this. So this is the uh, pronation, palm faces down. This is the semi-pronation. In the semi-pronation, if you push your hand down, a muscle popping out here, it is called brachioradialis, which is the most lateral muscle. So uh, the next muscle is just here. This is the next muscle. It is called extensor because it can do extension. Carpi, 
because it's crossing the carpal bones means wrist can do extension of the wrist extensor carpi radialis it's on the radial side extensor carpi radialis we have two extensor carpi radialis one of them is really long it's called extensor carpi radialis longus the other one is short extensor carpi radialis brevis so extensor carpi radialis longus attaches here just next to the brachioradialis it's coming from the lateral supracondylar ridge and then its tendon goes down and attaches here to the base of the second metacarpal bone. So as I mentioned earlier, it crosses the carpal bones, it crosses the wrist joint, it means that it can do extension of the wrist. Next to this, we have extensor carpal radialis brevis. Extensor carpal radialis brevis attachment is here, this lower attachment to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So here is the lateral epicondyle. This is the medial epicondyle. The lateral epicondyle is a common attachment site for the extensor muscles. So most of the extensor muscles attaching to the lateral epicondyle. And then it goes down and attaches here to the third base of the third metacarpal bone. So longus attached to the base of the second, brevis attached to the base of the third metacarpal bone. Both of them can do extension of the wrist, as their name tells us. They can also do uh, radial deviation. So two extensor carpi radialis longus brevis, brevis and flexor carpi uh, radialis. Three radialis muscle can do radial deviation. They are deviating the hand to the radial side. It's called radial deviation. Or abduction in the anatomical position, it's called abduction of the wrist joint. So I showed you three lateral muscles of the superficial layer. Then we have three long posterior muscles with short muscle. So you can see here the extensor digitorum. So again, it's coming from the common attachment side of the extensor, lateral epicondyle, and the tendon is split into four tendons and attaching to the four digits. And as you see here, if you look at closely, the um, tendon of the extensor digitorum expands and covers the metacarpal phalangeal, these joints, knuckles, and covers the uh, interphalangeal joints. So they can do extension of the digits. Extensor digitorum, extension of the digits. Next muscle is this one. Extensor digiti minimi, again it attaches to the lateral epicondyle, and as its ten name indicates, it attaches to the um, extensor expansion of the little finger. Digiti minimi means pinky, little finger, and can do extension of the little finger. So extensor digiti minimi has two tendons, one of them from the extensor digiti minimi. Sorry, the little finger has two. Uh, tendons, one of them coming from the extensor digiti minimi, the other one coming from the, as you see here, coming from the extensor digitorum. Third muscle from the posterior part of the superficial layer, we have extensor carpi ulnaris. Again, it's coming from the lateral epicondyle and attaches here to the uh, base of the fifth uh, metacarpal bone. So, extensor can do extension. Carpi, it crosses the carpal bones. Red ulnaris, it's on the ulnar side. This is the ulnar bone. Extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. Three muscles do extension of the wrist. Extensor carpi ulnaris plus flexor carpi ulnaris, they can also do ulnar deviation. So they deviate the hand to the ulnar side at the wrist joint or Abduction in the anatomical position is abduction or ulnar deviation, abduction or radial deviation. Last muscle from the posterior group is this. It's a really short muscle. It is called anconius. Again, it's coming from the uh, lateral epicondyle and muscle fibers go down and attach to the ulna. So as you see, it crosses the elbow joint posteriorly. So it can do extension of the elbow 
helps the triceps brachii muscles to do extension of the elbow. It can also attach us to the uh, elbow joint capsule. So during the extension, it can uh, pulling the capsule back and prevent it from impinging in the uh, elbow joint. It's another function of the ankenius. So I showed you the superficial layer, three muscles laterally, three plus short muscle posteriorly, and then I'm gonna focus on the deep layer. So deep layer, we have four long muscle, one short muscle. As you see some uh, deep muscles uh, poking out between the lateral and posterior parts of the superficial layer, you can see here. I'm gonna show you uh, the shortest one. As you see here, I'm taking out the lateral part of the superficial layer because the short muscle is deep to these muscles, brachioradialis and extensor carpal radialis longus brevis. So here we have this short muscle. It is called supinator. So supinator, as you see here, it's uh, wrapping around the upper one third of the shaft of the radius and neck of the radius. And then it goes back and attaches to the uh, supinator crest of the ulna. So if you look at here, this is the upper one third of the radius and the neck. So it's wrapping around the upper one third of the shaft of the radius and neck and goes back and attaches here to the supinated crest of the ulna. So when your forearm is in the um, uh, pronation, it contracts, it can contract and do supination. So as you know, the biceps brachia in the anterior compartment of the arm, this muscle is also a strong supinator because its tendon attaches to the uh, radial tuberosity. So the biceps coming from the anterior compartment of the arm and attaches here to the radial tuberosity. So when you are doing pronation, the tendon of the bicep pulling the radius back. So there are two supinators, one of them involving in fast supination, that is the biceps brachia, the other one involving in slow supination, which is the uh, supinator. Um, now I'm gonna show you the uh, four long, deep posterior forearm muscles. Three out of four goes, they go down to the thumb, so they have the word pollicis in their name. Pollicis means thumb. So look at here, this one is called the abductor, AB, doctor pollicis longus. So it's long, it's coming from the radius and all line introsseous membrane and the tendon goes down and attaches to the base of the uh, first metacarpal bone. So as you see, it attaches to the outside of the base of the first uh, metacarpal bone and do abduction, abduction. When you're moving thumb away from your palm, it's abduction, moving back to the palm is adduction, adduction. Moving to the body, flexion away from the body, extension, okay. So this is the abductor pollicis longus. Next to this, we have another muscle, extensor pollicis brevis. Extensor pollicis brevis, it's coming from the radius and it goes further down and attaches here to the base of the uh, proximal phalanx of the thumb. As its name tells us, it can do extension. This is the flexion, extension. And next muscle, you can see the tendon, the muscle belly is deep to the, uh, the extensor or superficial muscles. And it's coming from the ulna, it's really long, and then it goes down and tendon goes further down and attached to the distal phalanx of the thumb. So extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, they work together to do extension of the thumb. In between these two tendons of the extensor, we have a space, it's called anatomical snuff box, deep to this. You can see this caphoid muscle, sorry, bone, one of the carpal bones, and this red one represents the, uh, the radial artery. So I can show you on myself, this is my anatomical snuff box, and you can see medially the extensor pollicis brevis tendon and uh, sorry, the laterally extensor pollicis brevis tendon and medially here we have extensor pollicis longus tendon. 
In between them, we have the uh, anatomical snuff box. Deep to this, there is a bone, scaphoid, and overlying the ten, uh, scaphoid bone, we have the radial artery. So you can see here, this is the scaphoid. So anatomical snuff box would be here. If you look at closely to the dorsal surface of the distal end of the radius, there is a bony bit here. It's called uh, dorsal tubercle of the radius or Lister tubercle. The tendon of the, the extensor car the pollicis longus attaches here to the ulna and the tendon wrapping around the uh, Lister tubercle or radial tubercle of the radius, dorsal tubercle of radius, and it goes down and attaches to the uh, base of the distal phalanx of the thumb. So you can see here extensor pollicis longus wrapping around the dorsal tubercle of the radius and it attaches down here, it attaches to the distal phalanx of the thumb. The last muscle from this group is, is going down to the index finger. It has the name indices, extensor indices. You can see the tendon you cannot see the muscle because the muscle is deep to the superficial group. It's coming from the ulna and the tendon, it goes down to the extensor expansion of the index finger. So it can do extension of the index finger. If you look at here, we have two tendons for the index finger. One of them is coming from the extensor digitorum. The other one is for the extensor indices. Like pinky, for pinky, we have uh, extensor digitorum and extensor digiti minimi. So that's why index finger and little finger, they are more stronger than the middle one. So index and little finger, they do extension like this, more stronger than the middle one. So I showed you as a quick wrap up the posterior compartment muscles of the forearm, superficial layer and deep layer. Superficially, you can see the lateral part and posterior part laterally, you can see one, two, three muscles, brachioradialis, extensor carpal radialis longus and brevis. And posterior group, we have three long, one short, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris, and the short muscle is anconius. And deep muscle, I showed you one short, four long, short is supinator, Three out of four are for the thumb, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, and finally, extensor indices here. So these are the posterior for our muscles. Thank you so much.